Hello world, and we are back. My name is Kyle Fischel. This is going to be episode 166 of my poker vlog. For this one, I played 2 5 session at Sarasota, the One Eye Jacks Poker Club. Before I get into the hands, one quick announcement my club GG is doing a $600 free roll this Monday at 6 p.m., followed by $200 high hands. So if you want a chance for some free money as well as poker experience, Message me on Instagram, Telegram, and I've even started a Discord. I'm even planning on streaming this free roll. So definitely sign up early. I will not be able to get you logged in when I'm currently playing. So hope to see you there. And with that out of the way, let's roll the tape. Oh, just check. If you check, I win. Queen 10, you have nothing. Woo! Catch the three bet. Catch these punts. Told you, the passive lines, they work out. Everyone's after you. Just three bets with Queen 10. First hand of note, I'm in middle position and with two limps to me, I raised to $25 with queen at nine of hearts. Seems like a reasonable holding. Well, I get not one, not two, but three callers before the under the gun limper decides to limp re-raise to $75. When it folds back to me, yes, I'm getting an insanely good price. Yes, my hand is definitely playable to crack aces and kings. But when your opponent is basically just saying he's got a premium with this goofy under the gun limp re-raise, I think it's better to not call with this insanely good price and try to crack the kings or aces. Very unlikely you're ever going to do it. And like if the flop is three hearts, unless he has aces with the ace of hearts, I'm never really going to get a full double up. And even that hand has plenty of equity against me. So I advocate for taking the discipline route versus the limp re-raise from an under the gun OMC so I just let it go, and it turns out all the other players at the table agreed with me. They all folded as well. I don't advocate for rewarding or trying to crack the nits. Just let them knit it up. It's fine. Next hand of note. An early position player raised to $15. There's one caller. I look down at king-queen offsuit. Not particularly strong enough to 3-bet, so I make the call from the cutoff, and we end up going three ways to a flop of jack-10 deuce with two diamonds. Seems pretty good, flopping open-ended. The pre-flop aggressor continues for $30. There is one caller. If we were heads up, I think it's more acceptable to consider raising, but versing two opponents when one probably has a flush draw, I think calling is the best option. Take your equity. Any king, queen, ace, or nine turn card, barring it being a diamond, should give you the best hand. When I make the call, we are three ways to a turn card, which is the five of diamonds. So flush draw completes, not the best card, but when the preflop aggressor checks and the middle position player checks, I think both of them would bet into two other players if they had a made flush. So I think I'm pretty primed to go for a semi bluff here. Put a ton of pressure on single jack, single 10 holdings, and when called, I still have a ton of outs to improve. So I bet $95. Kind of disappointed to see the preflop aggressor call, think he has a jack at minimum, which is going to be hard to win against, unless the river is the ace of spades. We bink a straight. There is a flush out there. When he checks to me, we're not going to be afraid of a flush. Like I said, I don't think he checks into two players if he has a flush on the turn. So we can go for some value here. I bet $175. Don't want to go too big. Want single jacks, single disbelieving tens to pay me off. And my opponent somewhat side calls. Happy to see it. Definitely have the best hand here. I flip it over. My opponent has ace jack with the ace of diamonds. So get a sick river two pair for him, which gets me paid. So we're running decently today so far. Following that, it folds to me in middle position. I have pocket aces, the best starting hand. So I raised it $20. The player to my direct left calls and then it folds around. Somewhat disappointed. Would have loved to see a three bet, four bet situation, but we end up going heads up to a flop which comes queen 5-3 with two hearts. We don't have any hearts in our hands, so I think it's fine to go for a bet here, get value from flush draws, get value from queen X. So I bet $20. My opponent makes the call, and the turn is the six of hearts. Obvious draw gets there. Much better for my opponent. I think this is a very clear check spot. When I check to my opponent, he checks it back. Again, somewhat indicating he does not have a flush. And the river is the four of diamonds. Puts a four liner out there, but my opponent should never really have a deuce or a seven here, pretty much ever. So I think I want to go for some small value against a queen that would play this exact same way. I bet $30. Now to this bet, my opponent raises to 100. In a vacuum, you should probably fold to river raises with single pairs pretty much always. 
However, if you have any respect for your opponent at all, and he has any bluffs possible, I'm pretty much top of range here, so I really can't be folding aces when my opponent could have like ace-queen with the ace of hearts, maybe ace-five with the ace of hearts. I think my opponent's playing pretty close to optimally, very GTO strategy, so unless he has exactly ace-seven of spades, ace-deuce of spades, or pocket sevens, I should be winning. He could easily also be value betting king jack or king queen. So I end up making the call and my opponent has one of the very few hands that beat me, pocket sevens. So somewhat disappointing, aces are cracked, but luckily it wasn't a huge pot. Following that, we're gonna add a rare PLO double board bomb pot to the video. In Sarasota, there is a $10 PLO double board bomb pot every dealer change. So in this hand, we look down at ace, ace, queen, deuce with diamonds and hearts, what I consider to be probably a premium in PLO, although I am no expert. The top board comes queen, jack, seven, two diamonds. Bottom board comes jack, nine, five, two clubs. So we do have the nut flush draw on top and we got an over pair of aces on both boards. So when an early position player just leads out for 70, which is pot, seven players, 10 bucks a piece, I'm not going anywhere. Nut flush draw, over pair, seems good enough to call. I end up being the only caller, so we end up going heads up to two turn cards. Top turn is Queen of Diamonds, bottom turn is Deuce of Hearts. So we make another pair on bottom, but on the top board we make the nut flush. Board's paired. We do have three queens, so there are some full house possibilities for us as well. Maybe the blocker's more relevant. Have to check the PLO books on that one. Either way, my opponent checks to me. Thinking that it'd be disastrous if I bet here and get check repotted, I would pretty much be forced to fold. I decide to check this one back, try to get to a river as cheaply as possible, and decide from there. When the rivers are the five of spades and the six of spades, my opponent checks to me. Now I think I'm trying to get him to fold out the bottom board. I think a pair of aces isn't always the best hand there. Some of the time I think it is. I could be against a worse flush on top and nothing on bottom. So we're going to go for a bet here. I bet $160. Don't think I need to fully pot it as I do have value on both boards. My opponent thinks for a little bit before calling. All right. He has king, king, nine, five with the king, five of diamonds. So weaker flush on top. I think I'm actually scooping him. Takes me a second to realize he's got nines and fives on bottom. Disappointed to see that weakish two pair be able to win, but... On a few different river cards, I end up scooping the whole thing, so can't be that disappointed. After that, I have Queen Jack off suit, Queen of Diamonds, Jack of Spades, an early position player raises to $20, a late position player and the button calls. I decide to call from the big blind, think this hand's fine to defend. We end up going four ways to a flop, which is Queen, Five, Deuce with two diamonds. Having top pair and a backdoor flush draw feels fantastic, never going anywhere. I check, I'm not the preflop aggressor. It checks through on the flop and the turn is the 10 of diamonds. Now having top pair and a queen high flush draw, I believe I have the best hand here like 90% of the time and I wanna get value from the naked ace or king of diamonds. So I throw out a bet of $55, little over half pot, gonna charge anyone who thinks they're drawing here, but everyone folds pretty quickly. We take one down, feels pretty good, trending in the right direction before the next hand of note. I looked down at pocket queens and with an under the gun straddle, I raised to $35. The button decides to call before the big blind three bets to 100 and it folds back to me. He only has about $400 in his stack. The button also has about 250, maybe 300 in their stack. And with pocket queens, I think I'd rather just get it in here. Sometimes we're beat, but I do think my opponent has ace king, ace jack, maybe jacks and tens in range. So we rip it in his face, all in. He pretty much snap calls. Not excited to see that. Ask him if he wants to run it twice. He agrees. And then shows pocket eights. So much, much weaker than I thought he would be. First flop comes out. Nine, six, three. Feels good. Nine of spades. We don't have any spades to worry about. My opponent has red eights and the deuce of clubs on the river. Guarantees me half the pot. Always good to win the first board. Now let's win the second board and scoop. First flop is king six. Eight. Yep, right under them. That's disappointing. But we still have two queens to give us a scoop here. So you're telling me there's a chance. Turn is the seven of diamonds and river is quads for my opponent. Finds all the eights in the deck. Must be nice. Luckily, we still get to scoop the buttons call. So we get to profit about 30 bucks in this hand. It's better than losing, I guess. 
after that, I'm under the gun. I look down at aces again. We're going to raise to $20 because it's aces. We have to raise. The button calls and the big blind calls. So we end up going three ways to a flop of nine, seven, deuce, rainbow. I have aces and it's the toppest of pairs. So I'm just going to bet here. When it checks to me, I bet $35. Button folds, big blind calls. Turn is the king of clubs. Definitely better for my range than my opponent's. And this opponent is definitely willing to call with all sorts of hands. He's called down with second and third pair before. Not going to slow down, get value from 10, 8, 8, 6, everything like that. I bet $60, but he quickly folds this one. I decided to show as this opponent particularly was showing a lot of hands he didn't need to. So always nice to return the favor to a fun player. Following that, I looked down at ace-jack offsuit in middle position. The under-the-gun player raises to $20. This is a new Kyle. We are three betting this one. I raised to $65. Folds all the way to the under the gun player who jams for approximately $175. If this opponent's willing to get $400 in with eights, I am happy to get it in with him for $200 with ace jack off suit. I make the call and we do see we're in a 50 50 spot again. This time he has pocket tens and we agree to run it twice once again. First flop, queen, nine, seven, two clubs. I have clubs to fall back on if I can't hit a pair. King kind of ices it, also swaps some outs. A jack would now give my opponent a straight, and I need a 10 to beat him. But the river is another king. He wins the first board. Second board comes out 2-3-4 with two spades. My opponent has the 10 of spades, so there are some flushes he can get. But I gain four additional fives for an out. Turn is the nine of diamonds, and the river is the deuce of clubs. We cannot run good against this opponent running it twice today. Gentless, warmest person ever. Oh, look at that. I've been impaled. <laughs> Next hand of note. I'm under the gun with pocket sixes. I raised to $20. The player to my direct left three bets to 60. Folds all the way to the big blind who calls to 60. I'm not folding pocket sixes here, getting such a good price. So we end up going three ways to a flop of 877 seven with two spades. We check it in flow and the pre-flop three better bets $70. The big blind decides to call and now it's on me. I think calling isn't the worst option here. The three better could easily have ace X of any suit and just be betting range. He's a very GTO player. And the big blind could likely be calling with like an eight. So we're not doing great against that. Maybe a flush draw some of the time. But I think raise is actually a pretty sick option here. I could easily have a seven, and I doubt the big blind would call with just a seven on a, such a wet board. I'd like to see him raise it. If I had a seven, I would absolutely raise it here. So we got to find some bluffs. Pocket sixes of the black variety with the six of spades to fall back on. Seems very reasonable here. I raise it up to $225. I love this raise because I think it's going to work a lot of the time. The times it doesn't, I can continue the turn on any four, five, spade, nine. Plenty of cards that I can throw in the next barrel and really tell the story. So the preflop three better and continuer into two people folds. Feel pretty good about that. But then the big blind decides to call. Kind of dicey. He does have some sevens, I guess, when he decides to call a raise on the flop. So hoping to turn any of this equity that can give me a second barrel possibly get me to put a seven in a really tough spot, but the turn is the three of diamonds. Not my favorite for obvious reasons when he checks to me. I do think I beat a hand like nine, 10, six, five, although I double block it. And I'm still beating like ace five of spades, jack 10 of spades, any spades. So I do think I have enough showdown value to not need to put out a bet here. I think my opponent folds all of his pair of eights on the turn to this bet. So thinking he's weighted more toward draws and I can reevaluate on the river. My opponent checks dark into me on the river, and it is the king of spades. Absolutely horrible card. All the spade draws get there. I'm hoping my opponent has like 9, 10, and I'm still winning. So when he checks to me, I think about it for a little bit, but decide the flush is never folding and beating some hands. I check it back. My opponent has 8, 9 of clubs. I do expect that to fold to my flop raise, but... I mean, if just single pairs are calling raises, you can exploit a lot in this game. We end up losing that one, but very shortly after, we're greeted with a medium-sized pot to bounce back. Definitely helpful. Before the next hand of note, I button straddle. I look down at pocket queens. 
The big blind raises to $35. A player in middle position who another player had openly been joking about how tight they are, three bets to 135. All right, so one of the tightest players at the table, three bets, not great, but we have queens, we're probably continuing. But then the cutoff, four bets to 350. Now the specific player in the cutoff, I think I've played three or four sessions with him. I don't think I've ever seen this opponent three bet, not once. And now he's four betting. What a dumb spot, honestly. I would say in general at one, two and two, five live poker, no one four bets with like ace jack or jacks really that often. They pretty much never have four bet bluffs and they very rarely four bet worse. So in these live two five games, I think you have to be disciplined and just pitch the queens when facing a four bet. That being said, this is all player specific. If you have a player that has a very high three betting percentage and probably four bets more often, then yeah, call, get it in. But against someone who really never throws out four bets, you have to just kind of sigh fold. Additionally, in this hand specifically, like I said, the tightest player at the table three bet, and he got four bets, so we'll just let it go pretty happily here. The three better calls, we get to see a flop. I want to see how this hand develops. want to see if I was correct or not. The flop is ace high. I feel fantastic about my fold. My, if my opponent ever had ace king, I'm crushed. Ace, eight, five, two spades. The two players get it in, and one of them has pocket aces. So, good fold by me, I guess. We end up losing only $10 running queens into aces. All right, three hands left. Early position raised to $15. There's one caller. I look down at ace-10 offsuit. This will be three bet. Yes, it's a new Kyle out there. Think both these opponents have relatively weak ranges. There's about $35 of dead money out there, so we're going for it. $65 is the bet, and we get just the plus one player who called the 15 to call a second time. Well, that's a relatively weak range, I would say. When the flop is queen, five, four, rainbow, I expect my opponent to have like 10 jacks suited, nine, eight suited, random sixes, sevens, eights, middling pocket pairs that probably won't even continue versus more aggression on the queen high board. So it'll be one of the spots where I just see bet with very little equity. I bet $75. My opponent pretty quickly calls. All right, well, he pretty much has a queen in this spot, I would say. Turn is the bink ace of hearts. Feels great. My opponent checks to me. If my opponent has queen jack, king queen, any of that, he might fold to the second barrel when the ace hits when I'm fairly likely to have one. So I'm going to check this one back, go for value on the river. And when I do, the river is the deuce of clubs. Absolute great brick to see. Well, my opponent just leads for $50. Honestly, it kind of feels as though he's just leading with a queen trying to name his own price. And I probably should be raising here. However, I'm not sure what bluffs I have. I'm not sure what story I'm telling. So I think we'll just call this one and likely win against a queen. Except not this time. My opponent has ace queen. So yeah, the opponent that just calls 15 with ace queen, when he's the one that four bets, you can just pitch queens happily forever against that player. Next interesting spot. Early position raised to $15. I look down at ace queen off suit. I raise to $55. Yes, new Kyle worth three betting almost correctly today. And when we go heads up to a flop of queen, jack, seven, rainbow, my opponent checks to me. I think this board favors my opponent a little bit more. He's got jack, seven, eight, nine, queen, jack. I'm very unlikely to get three streets of value with my exact holding. So I think that my street of pot control will be the flop. I check it back. And the turn is the seven of spades. Not a particularly bad card. I don't expect my opponent to have a seven nearly ever. And he decides to bet. My opponent bets $50, never really folding, especially with the line I've taken so far, happy to call, and the river is the nine of clubs. So king 10 gets there as well as jack nine, queen nine. Few hands get there, but my opponent checks to me. I really don't think he would ever check a made straight, a made two pair that was best. So I think we can pretty happily go for some value here. I throw out $125, not even certain what I'm charging here. Maybe my opponent has pocket tens and will pay off a bet disbelieving. But he calls pretty quickly, I show my hand, and he has king-queen. So one of the very few hands I probably could have went three streets with, but honestly, if I bet flop and bet turn, I'd probably check back this river a lot of the time anyway, so probably get the same amount of money, no matter what, based on this exact runout. 
and a final hand of note. I'm under the gun, I raised to $15 with the Ace of Spades, 10 of Clubs, and only the big blind decides to defend, so we're heads up to a flop of Ace, Ace, Queen with two clubs. Flopping trips, beautiful sight. What's really odd is my opponent leads for $10. In my experience, these small leads on flops into pre-flop aggressors are usually straight draws, flush draws, trying to name their own price. And I should really just be raising here most of the time, charging him as he's told me he basically has a draw at best. But I think with three aces, this opponent might triple barrel. If the draws miss, I expect him to not give up at the river. So I decided to just call this one. On the turn seven of spades, my opponent checks to me and I have no idea why I checked this back. Truthfully, horrible misstep, need to charge all the draws as mentioned, so horrible check back. River is the king of clubs, probably one of the worst cards in the deck, and my opponent leads for $50. Fully pots it when the flush draw gets there, I do have the 10 of clubs, I block jack 10, I block clubs, but he's the big blind, like I'm not expecting to have big clubs here. You have 6-7 of clubs, 5-4 of clubs, but I think my hand's just too high up in my range to ever fold. I should just be flicking this in, especially for $50. But I decided I didn't want to pay off my opponent when he probably has it. So I just let it go. And he proudly shows three, four of hearts. The lesson in this hand is that you can't always attribute your way of thinking to other players. They might be doing just absolute nonsense some of the time. Like leading small into a board that is heavily favored or preflop aggressor. Damn. But as I've said in the past, if you show a bluff to me, you will likely make the vlog. So congrats to that player. We are into the game for $1,000 out of the game for 700. So we end up losing about 300 across five hours equates to $60 an hour or 12 big blinds an hour. Yes, despite the small loss, I would say the perfect way to play Queens is just get it in when you're bursting an action player and fold two nits who four bet. That's kind of the recipe for success obviously this is player specific but it does tend to work as a long-term strategy for lower stakes games if you've made all the way to this point i appreciate it thank you for watching please consider subscribing helps me out a ton and i will see you on the next one